I, I don't really want to change the subject, but Palmer, did you invite any eligible young handsome men to your soiree this evening? Oh, oh goodness, I forgot. Oh, Please forgive me. Oh, no, it's hopeless anyway. There isn't a man in the world that could measure up to our handsome host. This is Nina. I just called the office and they told me th that Cliff's over at your house. Could I speak with him? Uh, well, he, he did come by, but he's gone now. <sighs> Do you know where he went? No, he didn't say. He, he might have gone back to the station or maybe to the hospital. Or, or maybe he's on his way home. Oh, right, thank you. You're gonna love what I just did to your salad. Oh, Cliff, I have terrible news. What? Um, that was Mother on the phone. She has to take a client to dinner to close the sale. Hey, 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 settle down, settle down. Come on, sometimes business has got to come first. But I made a roast. I made scalloped I potatoes. I mean, I made her favorite pie. Hey, she knows you meant well. It's just, I do so little for her. I'm so disappointed. Hey, well, come on, come on. Hey, we can make the most of this, huh? You and I can have dinner. Smells great. Yeah. Okay. Come on. I knew that you weren't feeling well. <sighs> Nina, you're ill. What's wrong? Oh, I stomach cramps. Maybe it's food poisoning. And I doubt that everybody at the party ate the same hors d'oeuvres, so <sighs> nobody else got ill. Oh, must be a virus, then. There must be something that I can do. <sighs> What's this? Uh, iced tea. I thought it would help. Tea will keep you from dehydrating. It won't cure you, though. Oh, thank you. Nina, please, let me help you. Oh, thank you for coming. Thank you. you have a good trip Bye. home. Good night. Excuse me, Palmer. Uh, hmm. Palmer? Yes? Perhaps you are not aware that your house guest, Cynthia Preston, mm -hmm. has a thing for you. A thing for me? Yes. You don't be ridiculous. We're simply friends. Oh, well, mm -hmm. maybe you see it that way, but she doesn't fool me for a minute. She really, she really has designs on you. Oh, oh, <laughs> really? No, come <laughs> along. I know you're misreading her entirely. All right, I'm not going to belabor the point, but you be wary, my friend, or mm -hmm. you're going to wind up with a hook in your gill. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, where is Zach? I mean, he doesn't do that. Why? Right? Where is he going up to? We ran out of that special hot sauce that Palmer likes to have the Bloody Marys, and he's going to get some more. That's awful stuff, anyway. I hope he doesn't waste time making another batch. Everyone needs friends. Well, it's not a problem now. There aren't that many people now. Okay, I can handle it. Do oh. excuse me for interrupting. Cynthia, my darling. Excuse me. Nice to talk to you. You'll be very, very glad that I have 2020 hearing. I have been for years. Why this time? Well, I just overheard Erica warning Palmer about you. She was saying you have a thing for him. That nasty little gossip. Yes, well, if she really does get to him, you know, it could make things harder for you. <laughs> oh. 
I think I'll just take the wind out of her sails. Oh. Watch. Hmm. Andrew, darling. Junie wants to talk to you. All right. Excuse me. Mike. I have a very personal confession to make. To me? I adore your writing. I read The Land of the Rising Rivers and your book on Tibet. And I think you have a sort of sparse poetic style. You remind me of Hemingway. Well, you flat. You know, the only objection I have is the photograph on the book cover. It's so cold and forbidding, and I find you warm and youthful. Thank you. I think. <laughs> you know, I love the Orient myself. Uh -huh. I traveled to China a couple of years ago. I had the good fortune of meeting the Dalai Lama. Mike? Of course, I... Mike, this is a lovely party, but we mustn't lose track of time. Oh, do we have an engagement? Well, yes, we're going to have dinner at the Chateau, silly. Have you forgotten? Of course. <laughs> oh, I guess I had the wrong impression. What was that? Well... I assumed that Mike was here alone. Well, why on earth would you assume that? Because your last husband showed up. You are Mrs. Adam Chandler. It never occurred to me that you would make a public appearance with Mike. Well, not that I need to explain, but I'm divorcing Adam. Mike and I are going to be remarried just as soon as we possibly can. Wonderful. <laughs> Best wishes to you both again. You are getting a dream of a man, but then I'm sure you know that. <laughs> but isn't it a shame you have to give up the Chandler fortune? Oh, hadn't you heard? I'm not giving up anything. Everything of Adam's is mine. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm only the stage manager, Tim, but I have to be honest with you. Tad is Romeo. Look, I, I, I know he gave a good reading, but I've known him longer than you have, Tim, and he's, he's completely unreliable. We seem very eager. Well, see, and that's the key word. He's a troublemaker, Tim. Uh, and I know, and he's an egomaniac to boot. So are a lot of actors. But Tad Martin has no interest in your particular production. He just wants to be near Hillary Wilson. Would you please think about it? I mean, it's not too late to recast him. No way, Alfred. I'm very excited about him. Well, the chemistry between us two was, was dynamite. I think I could get an A on this. You're the director. And I, I told you I'd help out in any way I could, and uh, I'll, I'll stick to that. Why, well, you're great. <laughs> Finish up here by yourself, will you? Oh, sure. I'm off to see one of my drama professors. Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Hey, Alfred. I just took you. Uh, did you want something? Yeah. You know, I, I really still want to work on this production so much. Mm, Donnie, you, you heard Tim tell you all the female parts have been cast. I know, I know, but, but isn't there something I could do backstage? I mean, I'm not going to school now, and I've got lots of time, and I'll do anything. Makeup, hair. Well, all right, well, well I, I do need a lot of help with, with makeup and hair and props, costume, all that. If, if you are really serious about this, mm. I can definitely use you. Great. Thank you, Alfred. Mm. You're the best. Hillary. Hi. Are you busy? No, I'm not busy at all. Come on in. Yeah, I won't stay long. No, stay as long as you like. Here, uh, let me, let me uh, take your coat. No, 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 that's, that's okay. I, but Ted, I really feel funny about doing this, but I felt really strongly that I had to. Oh, well, then you better sit down and tell me all about it. Yeah. Well, I'll just, I'll get right to the point. When Tim cast you as Romeo, I seriously thought about quitting the play. And the only reason I didn't was because of Tim. I felt it would be really unfair to him if I backed out, like, really fast. Well, it would be fair to everybody. Uh, unfair to everybody. I mean, you would probably make the whole production. Well, I, I don't believe that. Anyway, I came over here to warn you. Tad, don't use the rehearsal time to take advantage of me. Why would I do that? Let me put it this way. Just don't... Certain scenes don't need to be rehearsed. Certain scenes like what certain scenes? The kisses and the lovemaking. Hillary, I hate to clue you in this late, but uh, Romeo and Juliet is a play all about kisses and lovemaking. Yes, I know that. Thank you very much. You know what I'm talking about, Tad? I'm talking about you and me. Please don't use the rehearsal time to come on to me the way you did in the audition. <laughs> 